Hare Krishna. I hope all of you are nicely situated, taking proper precaution and praying to Krishna. These are the only two things you can do. Take precaution from contamination and pray to Krishna and depend upon Krishna. Like uh, our prayer is Krishna, whatever you want, let it be. So uh, we are not, uh, we are not afraid. Mm. Rather, mm, when you get the opportunity, uh, we will just spread your glory. We'll sing your glory, mm. even at the face of death. We'll sing your glory. So, <clears throat> and that is our, that is what we learned from Srila Prabhupada. From Abhay Charan, we learned how to become Abhay by taking shelter of Krishna's Charan Kamal. Srila Prabhupada told us, Prabhupada showed us the way to become free from fear. Uh, Srila Prabhupada showed us how to even not be afraid at the face of death, at the time of death. Mm. Prabhupada taught us how to conquer death. That's how we conquer death. When we are defeated by death, we are afraid of death. And when we conquer death, then we are not afraid of death. So, so huh, let's remember the wonderful pastimes of Lord Ramchandra. Ramchandra is Maryada Purushottam. He is actually teaching us the codes of morality, the life of morality the perfect life, the ideal personality, ideal leader, endowed with all good qualities. He stands on truthfulness, virtue, mercy, compassion. At the same time, when he stands up against immorality and sin, uh, unfairness and injustice he is like a thunderbolt, no mercy. Yeah, why should he be merciful unto those who are miscreants? The Lord is showing, don't be merciful to the miscreants, that's weakness. It's a weakness. Only weak people tolerate uh, the sinful activities of the miscreants. Of course, in the age of Kali, uh, we do not stand up like that because this is a responsibility of the lawmaker, the king. Uh, he establishes the law and order. He establishes order by implementing law. And how does he implement law? Crime and punishment. When somebody commits a crime, he must be punished. But today's leaders are not, most of the time, they are not strong enough to do that. Uh, because uh, they are afraid. If they become too strong, then they won't get, they lose their popularity and they won't get the vote. Mm. But the Kshatriya kings were not like that. Uh, first of all, they were not holding the position by a vote of the mass. They are holding the position because of their pride and power, because of their power and strength. If the king is weak, some other king will come and defeat him and take over his kingdom. That's what actually happened. When the kings of India became weak, 
Then the invaders, the foreign Muslim invaders came, took over India. As long as the Indian kings were strong and powerful, then nobody could enter into India. Such a opulent country, such a prosperous country, naturally everybody wanted to come and conquer. The many, many a times foreign invasions had been there, but the kings of India were so powerful that nobody could even enter into the boundary of King India. But then, due to the age of Kali, when they become weak, weakness comes from sense gratification. When they got completely submerged in sense gratification, then they become weak. They started to fight among themselves and taking advantage of this weakness of the Indian kings, the invaders enter into India foreign invaders into, into India. And then came the Britishers. Just a handful of Britishers, actually India was in such a miserable state. Just a handful of Britishers ruled over this subcontinent of India. Uh, what a shame. And it's all because Indians were fighting with Indians. With the Indians, the British created their army to rule over India. So now, should we remain in that condition, <clears throat> at least for, the, for our own sake, let us become united. Let's not fight. That's how Kali spreads his influence. He creates us to fight and by fighting among ourselves, we become weak. Then the outsiders come and take advantage. And the best way to become unified in this age with Krishna in the center. That's the secret of success. If I put myself in the center, then I can never become united. My false ego will not allow me to become united with others because false ego's business is that. You stand alone because you are the best. So we have to give up this false ego, the feeling of me and mine. That give up that feeling of me and mine and rather shift our consciousness to Krishna and Krishna's. Everything is centered around Krishna and everything belongs to Krishna. Nothing is mine. What is mine? Whatever I'm claiming to be mine uh, was there before I came here and whatever I'm claiming to be mine will be there when I'm gone. In this respect, Prabhupada is giving a very beautiful example. He was talking to the Americans uh, in America. He said, wasn't this land existing before you all came from Europe? It was existing. You are not here, but the land was existing. Then you came and you claimed that this is your land. And someday he'll be gone and the land will still be there. So just try to rather understand who does this land belong to? Who does this country belong to? Who does this whole world belong to? Who does this entire universe belong to? Let's recognize that and remain grateful to him. Because he created such a wonderful universe. Created such a wonderful world. And it has full of full of comfort and opulence and abundance. Everything is there in abundance. So why should you worry about anything? So let's just remain grateful to him, chant his glory and let's progress in our spiritual life, establishing our relationship with him. So, this is the reason why Srila Prabhupada came, wrote so many books and uh, made arrangements to distribute those books so that people read them and understand them. Today, whatever we are discussing is simply for the sake of understanding that, recognizing the reality. Who is Krishna? Who is Lord Ramchandra? What did he do? 
And when we surrender unto him, what benefit we derive? Just by surrendering unto him, we achieve everything. So, uh, there are two sides, good and bad. Now here we are facing good and bad. The bad, the extreme bad, the, the, sim, the personification of bad, uh, badness is Ravan. All the bad qualities are in him. Although materially he is very successful, uh, materially he has conquered so many kingdoms, even the demigods were defeated by him. Materially he built a palace, he built a kingdom. A city full of gold, made of gold. The city of Lanka was made of gold. He had so much opulence. He had so much gold. The houses were built with gold. Palaces were built with gold. The city walls even were built with gold. And personally also, he was a very powerful person. Very handsome. Ravana was actually very handsome, although his subtle body was like a, like a terrible looking body. <laughs> but apparently, uh, like we have noticed, like Hanuman, when Hanuman started to appreciate, when he saw La Ravan sleeping on his bed, he was just a very handsome person, powerful body, handsome person. But uh, he's bad. Uh, he's bad. Why? Uh, because he doesn't have any consideration of virtue. Materially, he may be very successful, but he doesn't have any consideration of uh, wrong and right. For the sake of his sense gratification, he is prepared to do anything because he was so powerful that he didn't care about anyone. Generally, people do not want to act in a wrong way because they're afraid of being caught and punished. But he didn't have that fear. Like he thought that he is, uh, he is the Lord of everyone. Whatever he does, I mean, he has the right to do anything that he wants to do. No uh, consideration of the consequences. But here we are seeing even a personality like Ravan cannot survive the punishment of the Lord. And at the same time we are seeing uh, in the same family the personification of virtue, Bibhishan. Uh, Ravan's brother. But he's advising Ravan, please don't do that. You have done something wrong. You have stolen somebody else's wife. Uh, that is unfair. Uh, so please return his wife to him. Make friends with him. But Ravan was not prepared to listen to him. Mm. This is another thing about this kind of people. Immoral, sinful people. They don't want to listen to any good advice. So as a result of that, Bibhishan left. Along with his four uh, intimate associates. And when Bibhishan went across the ocean, he could fly across the ocean. And he came to Ram's camp. And when the Hanuma, when the monkeys saw him, they thought he's a Rakshas, he came to attack them. You know. So they were very worried. And they stood up uh, in uh, defense. But Bibhishan identified himself that he said in a very humble way that he is Ravan's brother. When Ravan didn't want to listen to his good advice, he rejected Ravan and he came to surrender to Ram. So Shugri went and reported to Ram that such and such person has come. He's claiming that he is Ravan's brother. So, uh, and then Ram uh, asked different monkeys, so what do you think we should do with him? Different monkeys, gave different suggestion. Angad said, uh, if, can, if he can be of use, 
then we can keep him. If we can benefit from him, yes, we can keep him with us. But we should be very careful. We should be very vigilant and we should watch him all the time. Uh, Jambavan also said that, yes, uh, we should watch him very carefully. Ram asked Hanuman, Hanuman, what do you think? Here you can see the Hanuman's wisdom. Hanuman said that he can be of great use. And it looks like you know, he has sincerely come, he has come to surrender with all sincerity to Ram. Because from his face, one can see that he is not duplicitous. He, he is not crooked. He is very upright and straight. And in this way, Hanuman just gave his thing, saying that one can, from his face, one can see what is inside him. He looks so peaceful, so gentle, so noble. And so Ravan then asked Sugriv. Sugriv's response was that when one betrays his own brother, then he can betray anybody. Then Ram just told them, you see, when somebody comes to me, no matter with whatever intention he comes with, I accept him. Even if my enemy comes to me, to surrender to me, I accept him. If Ravan came to me, and I would have accepted him, I would have protected him. <laughs> so this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Whoever surrenders unto him, the Lord is so merciful that he accepts him. Because he is the Supreme Father. He is the Supreme Father of everyone. He is also the Supreme Father of Ravan. Ravan may be behaving like that, but after all, Ravan is his son. Every living entity is his son. Every, he is the supreme father of every living entity. So his attitude is like uh, a father's attitude towards his son. So when no matter what the son did, whatever the son uh, have done in the past, but if the son comes and tells the father, Daddy, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. What does the father do? Uh, father naturally accepts him. So Bibishan was accepted by Lord Ramchandra and Bibishan started to tell Ram about everything. Lanka's situation, Ravan's strength, uh, his military strength, uh, Ravan's physical strength, what he has done. Then Ravan's uh, allies, uh, and his big allies is, Bibi, is Kumbhakarna. Uh, he is like, he is huge like a mountain. And he has such incredible strength. And, <clears throat> and then huh, Ravan's commander-in-chief is Prahast. Prahast also is extremely powerful. Uh, he, killed, he defeated Jakshas, uh, the, the followers of Lord Shiva in Kailash. And Indrajit, his son, he defeated Indra, he, he captured him and uh, kept him imprisoned in Lanka. And finally Brahma came with an appeal uh, to release him. And he released but with some uh, amazing uh, benedictions from Lord Brahma. And he has the power to even fight invisibly. And he is as powerful as La Ravan himself. And in this way, uh, he just told about different uh, Rakshasha allies of Ravan. Mm. Then <coughs> Ram uh, decided to 
they build a, he, and he asked Bibhishan, so how to cross the ocean? Only a few monkeys probably can uh, jump across. So Bibhishan suggested that uh, we can approach the ocean god and see if he can do something. And if you uh, tell him, then probably he'll do something. So Ramchandra started to call out to the ocean god, but he wouldn't come. So Ram became so angry. So he was about to uh, shoot an arrow to dry up the ocean. The entire dry ocean would get dried up. But then the ocean god came and begged forgiveness. And, and then he assured Ram that he can build a bridge and he will assist him in that. He'll, whatever would be thrown on the ocean to build the bridge, that will be floating. Nothing will sink. Even big, big boulders, big mountain peaks uh, would be floating. So, uh, then all the monkeys just went out, uh, everywhere started to look for uh, big ocean, big boulders, big stones. Even they were breaking the mountain peaks and bringing them, they were so powerful. Uh, we see that there are some uh, mountains, they are flat on top. Uh, in Cape Town in South Africa, there is a famous mountain called Table Mountain and the top is just, just plain. So it's understood that Hanuman actually or monkeys, big big monkeys broke that mountain peak and to build the bridge and that's why they are flat. It's broken and it's just flat. So this is how powerful they are and how everything was floating and they were they started to build the bridge, throwing them. The f it took them only five days to build the bridge. Uh, hundred Jojanas long. Hundred Jojana means 800 miles. Uh, and 10 Jojanas wide. Uh, 80 miles wide, 800 miles long. Took them only five days. First day. They built 14 Jojanas. Second day, 20 Jojanas. Third day, 21 Jojanas. Fourth day, 22 Jojanas. Third day, 23 Jojanas. And bridge is complete. <laughs> and the bridge has been not only uh, big, big boulders and mountain tops and things. The bridge, the surface of the bridge was smooth, made smooth with logs put uh, one after another. So that's how they made it uh, plain. And then on top of that, they put leaves and small branches and even flowers. And so the <laughs> bridge was complete. Now by the mercy of the Lord, what is not possible? Uh, Impossible becomes possible uh, by the mercy of the Lord. When we sincerely try to serve the Lord, yes, we can achieve uh, an impossible feat. Impossible becomes possible by the mercy of the Lord. And so this is how the bridge was completed. And uh, Hanuman took Ram on his back. Uh, Angad took Lakshman on his back. And three of them, Sugriv, Ram and Lakshman, carried, Ram and Lakshman carried by Hanuman and Angad, they are in the front and behind them there are millions and millions of monkeys just, just came to Lanka. So they came on top of Subal mountain, Subela mountain and spent the night there. In the morning they saw the beautiful city of Lanka and so uh, strongly protected uh, and so but Ram when he was looking at Lanka he was simply thinking of Sita 
So then uh, Ram decided to send a messenger. Angad he sent as a messenger with a, a proposal to return Sita and not fight. So this is how a noble man does. Before he gets into a kind of a fight, uh, he would make a proper proposal that let's not fight. But just as Durjodhan would not listen to any such advice, Ravan also didn't want to listen to any such good advice that was carried by Angad. Uh, simple uh, proposal, Re return Sita and stop the fight. And Hanuma and Angad started to speak to Ravan in a very strong way, saying that what a sinful person he was, how he has done the most abominable thing by kidnapping Sita in this way. And uh, if he doesn't comply, if he doesn't return Sita, then be prepared to be killed by Ram. Ram. And not only he'll be killed, all your whole family will be killed, all of Lanka will be destroyed. So when he was speaking like that, Ravan could tolerate that and he just ordered, arrest him and kill him. So immediately four very powerful Rakshasas came to capture him. So Angad just stood there without moving. So those two persons, Rakshasas, came and held him by his arms. So when they held him, Anga just jumped up. And those two Rakshasas kept on hanging on his arms. And then finally they just fell in front of Ravan. And Anga just went on to the top of that palace and just kicked the top of the palace and broke it. And then he came back to Ram. So now the battle is inevitable. So uh, this way, the battle started. Ram actually made the strategy, who will be where. Uh, there were four gates. Oh, another thing happened. Uh, like in the morning, they were watching from top of the mountain. Then, all of a sudden, they saw that Ravan on top of the northern gate. There was a wall all around Lanka and there are four gates. One on north, one on west, one on south and one on east. So, on the northern gate, he was standing there, <coughs> surveying the situation. And then, when Sugriv saw Ravan, he couldn't contain himself. He just jumped from top of the mountain, landed right in from Ravan and just hit him so hard with his hand. Ravan fainted. And then when he came back to his senses, the fight started to fight again. Like these warriors are so powerful that they would faint for a second or two and then they'll come back to their senses and start fighting. So when Ravan saw that he was losing, then Ravan started to use magical, demoniac magical tricks. So recognizing that he is applying magical tricks, so Sugriv just jumped back and came to Ram. Ram actually chastised him. The Sugriv, you can't act so, have such, uh, such a way, uh, irresponsible way. You are the general of the army. You are the king of the monkeys. And if anything happened to you, what would happen to all the monkeys' morality? They will completely lose their confidence and enthusiasm. And then we are going to be defeated. But uh, Sugriv said that he just couldn't contain, contain himself when he saw Ravan. Seeing oh, this miscreant, what he has done, like he just uh, couldn't uh, restrain himself. So then Ram told him, admired him, that yes, at the same time, you have done something great. You have created fear in the heart of Ravan. And you have en enlivened uh, the monkeys. You have uh, inspired them with your brevetto. 
and so in this way <coughs> uh, then uh, now the monkey is singing the glory of ram all the monkeys started to uh, move towards lanka and a terrible fight actually ensued and many many rakshasas died so did many monkeys also uh, and uh, so at that time okay in the meantime ha huh, ravan told his one of his conjurer magician rakshasa to create a head of rava ram and also make the identical bow like that of ram through his magic trick and he went to sita and said last night when ravan ram was sleeping we chopped his head and we killed all the uh, monkeys and all the uh, uh, lakshman and all the leading monkeys so seeing that sita just started to cry Uh, she started to blame koiki for all that he said that for it's only for you that all this has happened uh, for your because of your what you did dasarath died ram had to go to the forest mm. jatayu died trying to save ram trying to save sita trying to save me sita was crying so then ravan started to appeal to her Uh, so now that your husband is dead for whom you are actually waiting so now that he is dead now you come to me and i propose to you that you will become my principal queen but sita didn't pay any heed to ravan's proposal at that time one of the ministers came and said something to ravan and ravan quickly went back so at that time sharma bibishan's wife consoled sita he said look Uh, it's not true that ram is dead it's some just a magical trick that they are showing uh, as if ram's head it's not ram's head uh, and so then in this way sita was consoled and <coughs> sharma bibishan's wife had been <coughs> supporting sita time and time again so terrible fight ensued between the rakshasas now they started to fight even at night and rakshasas uh, uh, opted for fighting at night because at night they become more powerful but still monkeys uh, were uh, slaughtering them killing them they had the most advanced weapons uh, but uh, the monkeys fighting just bare handed with rocks and tree trunks and still they couldn't be defeated so in this way the fight ensued and so i will and now so like the other days bhakti prem maharaj will be leading the kirtan and in kirtan Uh, many other devotees are also invited to join uh, so instead of having kirtan <coughs> after every class for 10 minutes or so we decided to have a long kirtan uh, after the this class english class thank you all very much all glories to shilo prabhupada gol premanande hari